Let me ask, how many of you spend more than one hour on your daily trips? And how many of you think that's too much time that you spend traveling? It feels like a waste of time, doesn't it? I mean, we could be doing much better things with this time, like working, studying, exercising, shopping, or even sleeping. I'm sure he agrees with me. Yet, this is our current reality. Since we've built cities for the automobile, and all of us started driving, we have been spending more and more time in our trips. Even getting to some extreme examples, like where I come from, where one in every four inhabitants spends more than three hours in traffic. Three hours, can you imagine that? And situation is even worse for public transport users, as they usually spend twice the time of drivers per trip. But unfortunately, even if we make rail systems faster, average speed will still be lower than necessary because they have to stop in every station on a linear path. And for users, it means unnecessary stops that waste their time and make the car more attractive. As a consequence, we now live in cities which are congested, polluted, and where the supply of public transport is always behind the demand. Therefore, reforming our transport systems might not be enough for the future. We need to transform them with more sustainable and innovative solutions. For that, I bring the Superleft project. The Superleft project is a conceptual mass transport system focused in all these urban challenges. It consists of a circular main line, stations set apart on a sideline, and autonomous vehicles that follow predefined stopping patterns that can have different settings. These attributes, when combined, can lead to higher average speeds and lower emissions and lower energy consumptions than a regular rail system. The circular line enables the whole functioning of the system while connecting the line to other lines in the city and providing better access. We already have one example, which is the circle line in London. And the use of autonomous vehicles and stations on a sideline reduces the number of undesired stops for users as only the vehicles programmed to stop at a station at a certain time will move to the sideline and attend the station. It functions like this. Each vehicle is an autonomous part of the system with its own engine and its own stopping pattern. These vehicles travel together as a train just to have better aerodynamics, but they are all independent. So while the vehicles that are programmed to stop at a station at a certain time will move to the sideline, the vehicles which are not programmed to stop will keep moving on the main line. Then the programmed vehicles will stop and attend the station. After passengers board, these vehicles will return to the main line, joining a new convoy that's approaching, and then they all move to the next stop. With that, a vehicle that stops once in every seven stations can have an average speed three times higher than a regular train, even if traveling with the same top speed. And then you can ask me, how will it work? The mathematical model behind the stopping pattern is the use of an odd number of stations on a circular line and vehicles programmed to stop in prime number patterns. By making the number of stations one that is not multiple of any of the patterns, it is guaranteed that every vehicle will stop at every station eventually, taking a number of laps equal to its pattern to attend every station. It might sound a bit complicated, I know, but it's not. <laughs> Let's say, for example, that we have a line with 31 stations, and we have vehicles programmed to stop every one, two, three, five, or seven stations. Let's say, for example, that you want to travel from station number nine to station number 26. It means you need to travel 17 stations, and you can have many different combinations to reach that destination. The best one in this case is that you board an E7 vehicle, and then you travel for two stops. Then, you board a C3 vehicle and you travel for one stop. Since you've only stopped three times instead of 16, your journey time will be much lower than it will be in a regular train. And you can do the math at home, but I guarantee that no user will need to ride more than two different types of vehicles to reach any destination. And this works for any line of any size. Finally, if we add to that the already available technology of photonic ink, which can change the color of a surface by using electricity, then we can have vehicles which can be reprogrammed to any of the patterns and a system which can always provide enough vehicles for any demand. That, my friends, is the end of crowding. 
So in summary, this project intends to show a new possibility for transportation systems to anticipate future demands and increase overall efficiency in transport networks. Combining future technologies with innovative ideas, we will be able to provide up-to-date levels of service and better, cleaner and smarter public transport for users so we can all enjoy more of our lives than on board of a car, a bus or a train. Thank you.